Evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris is back for some more Hearthstone Arena action. I'm not going to spoil the last couple of runs, but I will say I am in the mood for success. Let's just go ahead and pick Mage, a top-tier class. Definitely the best of these three for the arena, and see how well we can do. All right, we're kicking things off with a quality rare. Blizzard is just so, 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 so good. When, you, when your stuff is frozen, it is so irritating. It's like almost more irritating than having it die. So uh, getting a Blizzard as the first pack is definitely promising. These are all three cards that I would be happy to play. I think the most important is Polymorph because it's uh, one click removal and it's pretty good. Oh man, I would say that all three of these cards are worse than the other two cards I had for Polymorph. I would definitely take an Argent Squire or a Boulder Fist Ogre over any of this crap. Um, well, Blizz oh, mages don't have any weapons, so this is just an overcosted Grizzly Bear, and this is 2-1 uh, one for 1 that does nothing else. This guy is so mediocre, I hate taking up 5 mana spots to put him into my deck. But with a mage, it can kind of deal 3 damage if you pay the extra 2 mana for the hero ability, so I guess he's the least bad of all these cards. Ah oh, man, tough call here. I wish the Cult Master were in the last pack. I would have totally taken it. But I think we have to take Fireball. As good as the Cult Master is, Fireball is very, very important to have. So you have a chance to burn things out. We have two pieces of trash and Flame Strike. So uh, easy there. Wow. Uh, so the perennial question, what is better, Polymorph or Fireball? I think the answer is Fireball. Because it doesn't leave a sheep behind. This sheep does sometimes just ruin you. And it can also do, be used, I think the swinging point for me is it can be used to deal damage directly to the opponent's face, which can sometimes help you finish out games early. Alright, here we have a choice of a really good 3-drop. Let's go ahead and grab the Worgen. Uh, the, the Divine Shield's really great, and I'd say it, it, it's more of a hurdle for your opponents to get across. However, the Worgen, you can kind of uh, trigger it as a mage with your own hero ability and uh, sometimes do amazing things, so we'll give them a shot. Alright, I could take a Tiger. This guy's, this guy's actually really good. Um, the, the card drawing is nice, but I'll take this guy. He's a, he's a good 5-drop. He's good for closing out games. Well, we'll pick him up here. Oh man, what is up with all this trash? Well, I think the Elven Archer is a bit underrated. Not that it's great, don't get me wrong. It's just underrated, because as a mage, you can spend 3 mana and deal uh, 2 damage with this little dude. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pick her up. I think the Ogre Maga is worth considering, but... Um, I mean, spell damage is obviously great for Blizzard or for, for mages, but uh, it's, it's very expensive. I'd much rather have the Kobold if I am going to take that. Well, we get lucky here and grab Pyroblast, so we're getting quite the burn deck put together. I'm not really tempted by the Doomsayer at all, and the Mountain Giant's big dude, but uh, the Pyroblast is, is definitely the pick there. Here, um, lots of choices here. The Twilight Drake, I'm just getting less and less impressed with the more I see it in play. The Cobra is nice. It's an answer to almost anything except for Divine Shield. The Wild Pyromancer does deserve some consideration because if you, it's, a, it's a way to clear things out a little bit more. Um, and it's a 2-drop, which I kind of do need. Hmm, I think I'll go for the Wild Pyromancer. We'll keep the kind of aggressive bent alongside the ra Raging Organ, but I may regret not having the Cobra later. We'll see. Alright, here we're going to take Cone of Cold. I freaking love this spell. It's just so annoying for your opponents to deal with. Do I take another Polymorph? Um, I will play with two Fireballs and two Polymorphs. These, these are okay creatures. I would certainly play them, but they're not good enough to tempt me away from a Polymorph. But if I start seeing more Fireballs and more Polymorphs from here, I am going to start really thinking about whether or not I actually want them. Aha! Well, here we can take a 3-3 for 3 that has healing, which is nice, but I'm actually going to grab Mirror Image. This is so obnoxious for your opponents to deal with. It's just so good. Um, let's make sure we get the Owl. This stuff's kind of trashy, so I'll take the Owl here to make sure we have a little bit of silence action going on. And I'm going to grab the Panda. That can be nice. At the moment, at the, all I have it to combo with are the Archer and the Iron Beak Owl. But honestly, even if it's just... Oh, or actually the Stormpike Commando as well. Um, but these cards are sort of mediocre, and I'd like to reserve these expensive drops later if I actually see something good. Okay, well, um, I think the Archmage is actually pretty solid. He's a really hefty dude. He's as, he's as beefy as an ogre, just doesn't hit quite as hard. And you get some spell damage, which is really nice for Cone of Colds and Fireballs and Flame Strikes and whatnot. The Ooze is worth considering. I have been seeing a lot of Warriors, so it's nice to have an out against weapons. You know, I'm going to grab it here. I might be sad not to have the Archmage, but not sad enough not to grab that Ooze. All right, Flame Strike number two. Yes, please. Ooh, very good pack here. Holy gods. Well, we've got one, two, three things to play on turn two. Let's make sure we have Shattered Sun Cleric in here. This thing is so great. The Money Berserker... Also very, very good. It's a tough call here because as a mage, you can trigger the Enrage and then deal up to 5 damage with this, so he can really trade up like to ridiculous levels. I'm tempted almost for that alone, but I really like to have some buff. That's just my personal style. I like to have some kind of buffing. I like to have some outs in case my opponent's creatures are slightly better than mine. 
Well, we're going to take another Pyro Blast. Uh, it's a bit risky. They could clog up your hand, but this stuff is... Yeah, I mean, this guy is kind of okay sometimes, but uh, we'll, we'll grab another Pyro Blast there. All right, well, here it's a very tough call. The Argent Commander is obviously great. I don't think I want the Abomination. The Stampede and Kodo is just amazing. So the Stampede and Kodo and the Argent Commander both, like, kill stuff when they drop. The Argent Commander is a little bit more predictable, so I will pay that extra mana and grab him. We'll take an Arcane Explosion over this sort of trashiness stuff here. And a Frostbolt. I will take pretty much every Frostbolt I see. Ah, Frostwolf Warlord is a k -k -k combo with Mirror Image, and I do have a fair amount of uh, cheap stuff back here. Well, actually, yeah, kind of. I don't actually have any four drops for creatures, just fireballs and polymorphs. Hmm. Well, the Frostwolf Warlord has a bigger upside, but he's also got a bigger downside. We'll take the Water Elemental. I like having this as an out against uh, warriors. Paladins and rogues swinging weapons at me. Now the mirror image is also good, but it's not quite good enough over this premier four drop. All right, well here I think I actually have enough spells to warrant the Auc auctioneer over these sort of mediocre creatures. I don't want a trash two drop there. We have an arcanist. I don't have any secrets though, so I think it has to be a demolisher. I mean, I could take this as an out against weapons, but this is so bad. The stats are just horrific. Yeah, I'll have to take a demolisher here. I'm not excited about that though at all. Could do a vaporize, but uh, I think a sunwalker is worth it. And Ice Lance, um, you know, this is the time, I think, to pick up the Novice Engineer. We currently have zero things that draw cards, so it's nice to get a little bit of that going. And I cannot pass on another Blizzard, although the Pyromancer and the Summoner are great, of course. And the Molten Giant can be good, but the Faceless Manipulator is a little bit more consistent, so I'm going to grab it. I would have taken a Sea Giant over the Faceless Manipulator, but not a Molten Giant. Molten Giant is... Uh, too nitpicky, like you have to have your health in between 10 and 20, and you know, you might play it, and then the opponent just ignores it, and you lose right away. The Sea Giant's ability to come down earlier and more reliably without depending on your health total is very significant. Okay, well, we're going up against Malevolence in capital letters, the Paladin. I don't like any of these cards. This is a 3-drop, but it's not really one that I want to play. It's just too fragile. It doesn't hit hard enough. Let's get some actual drops. We do have plenty of 2-drops in this deck. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Well, now I'm just wishing and praying for the days when I had a Demolisher. I mean, that's the problem with all these spells. Mages have really great spells, but you can also have hands where you just don't have anything to play. Um, my opponent mulliganed three of his cards. Cut of Cold. Uh, that's decent. Could slow my opponent down a little bit. I uh, could kill off some of his 1-1 one, one recruits and see what he's got. Boy, this, this, could, this actually could go really ugly. Well, my opponent is making what I'm pretty sure is a mistake. Playing this for tempo, like making me use my second turn to kill it, is only actually valuable if I had something to do with my second turn. I didn't. So my opponent just went down a card for nothing. Especially because the Young Priestess has a, a benefit. I mean, you might as well wait until you have a creature on the board. Then you can play it. Give him another minion plus one health, and then it dies. Like, then that's worth it. Just playing that um, out into the open in front of a mage is not a good idea. So we might be up against a newer player, at the very least, it's someone who has handicapped himself. Alright, Knife Juggler is a very good card, I currently still have nothing to do. So, um, Brewmaster, perfect. Alright, we're gonna drop this down, try to trade against his Knife Juggler. He still has the coin, he could uh, whip out a True Silver Champion here, or a uh, Hammer of Wrath with the coin. Or put a Divine Shield on the Knife Juggler. Or do that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Do you have more? Ah, ha, ha. Well, now that makes a whole lot more sense. So if he was just going to put the Blessing of Wisdom and um, do nothing else, that would have been silly. Uh, he's instead going to do that. Uh, that was a little bit of a mistake. Again, I would say, to, to really be candid, I, I think my opponent should have taken the chance to pop the Divine Shield against the Youthful Brewmaster. That, that seems like it would have been the, the best play to me. Okay, so what we can do here is we can get a little bit greedy ourselves. I can uh, pop Divine Shield, attack pass, and then plan to kill everything with Blizzard next turn. Or I can maybe play it a little bit slow. I could I could Kona Cold, stop these things from attacking, pop the Divine Shield that way, and then um, I could attack pass. Then, then Blizzard's still the next turn, so I basically use a card to preserve some damage. Well, Code of Cold here um, saves me 5 damage, plus it also robs my opponent of a card. I could also polymorph this, but that seems very silly since it's about to die to a blizzard. So we're going to do this. We're going to Code of Cold. Freeze his stuff. Pop Divine Shield. I find it a little bit odd that Divine Shield doesn't prevent the cold effect. 
like you're like oh it hits the divine shield and then dissipates and then you're not frozen but but it, it, it doesn't so now my opponent will play some stuff and everything's getting blizzarded even if he plays something that doesn't die to a blizzard that's just why blizzard is so freaking amazing it'll freeze so as long as it isn't a taunter i'll just be able to keep on swinging now this is a little bit of card advantage I spent two cards, Cone of Cold and then Blizzard, to kill these things. So it's two cards for two cards. But I there's also a Blessing of Wisdom on this Knife Juggler, so I'm getting a little bit of value um, out of you know taking care of business there. Okay, my opponent is thinking, long as well as hard. There goes the coin. What does he have for five mana? A Recruit. That's good, that'll die. And Harvest Golem. That will not die. Oh, jeez, that was a 25% chance that both juggles would hit me, Panda. Oh, that really sucks. A whole lot. Um, shit. Well, I'm still gonna Blizzard. But that really sucked. If even one of those knives had hit me, I would've had this and I would've swung for at least three more damage, maybe even more. Damn it, that is unfortunate. Well, that's Hearthstone, folks. Sometimes, sometimes things just don't go your way. And that's life. He's got a Razor Fen Hunter here. Lots of chumpy stuff from this opponent. Storm Pike Commando, that seems maybe doable? I don't know. Doesn't actually have that good of a target here. I'd rather play this on turn 7 where I could use this and my hero ability. This guy's not that great either. I mean, I can kill the Razor Fen Hunter and then everything else sort of gangs up and kills it. Harvest Golem plus a little Piglet. I could play the Auctioneer. The issue with the Auctioneer, though, is that he's just going to die right now. Another option would be to play the Iron Beak Owl, silence the Skull, and ping it off. But then one of these things can kill the Owl. It, that sort of sucks, and I don't have anything to do with the rest of my mana. Alright, I think we'll do this. This seems to be the least of all evils. We're going to kill the Razor Fen Hunter, pass the turn. I'm expecting him to use a Golem, plus a Silver Hand Recruit to finish this off. Although, if he has a Shattered Sun Cleric or a Dark Iron Dwarf... He can get rid of this much more efficiently. And then I'll have the Stormpike Commando to pick a thing and then finish it off with Hero Ability. That all might change if he plays something that's really, really big and I consider it worth polymorphing. Alright, he went for the trade, which is smart. He still has his whole turn here. Stranglethorn Tiger, he's got one of those himself. Fair enough. Well, now this is kind of undroppable. Ugh, that sucks. Ah, uh, shit. Well, we're gonna do this anyway. Let's, um... Ping that off. Ping that off. Pass the turn. So if the Tiger attacks into my Commando, it'll be at one health. I'll be able to ping it off next turn. So that Panda, by the way, that died had only 25% chance of dying. It could have been hitting all this time, which could have made it easier for Pyroblast to win. If I lose this game, it will be entirely because... Uh, of that panda having gone down. Got a secret here. Oh, fuck. That's almost certainly Noble Sacrifice. Shit. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, we have a couple of Pyroblasts now. That's interesting. So if I can get my opponent just down seven... My god, the panda would have won me the game if it had lived. If I had just the panda out here, I could flush out Noble Sacrifice, hit for four, it'd be a 20 health. I could just Pyroblast, Pyroblast win the game. God damn it, that panda! Oh man, the knife juggler was so good. I cannot attack with this, it's almost certainly Noble Sacrifice. This opponent's been playing a bit questionably, and he might be like, you know, making some bad plays or whatever, but that is almost certainly Noble Sacrifice. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Ah man, I could play this. No, I want to play this next turn and then Polymorph. That's what I want to do. Ugh, this is ugly. I could Pyroblast him in the face anyway, that's a bit speculative. Alright, what we're going to do is I think we're going to ping this thing. And... I don't know, I'm just going to play this thing. I'm missing the opportunity for some card draw after he maybe kills it with this tiger, but maybe my opponent won't want to do that. I don't know. We'll see. God, oh, God. Well, that's just how it works, folks. Sometimes incredible odds go against you when you lose a game, but if you know what you're doing, you'll win more than you lose anyway. Anyway, uh, I do have a couple of flame strikes back here. They will definitely bring me back unless my opponent plays some really impressive stuff. That's pretty good. It actually means that when Noble Sacrifice triggers, it will it will use up one of these durabilities, and the guy will be a 3-2. So I actually would run in with the Storm Pike Commando now if I were given the chance. All 
man. That was three of my opponents. Man, God, this guy plays so slowly. I just want to murder someone. Oh, my God. Come on, buddy. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Actually, no, that's, that's five of his eight mana. Excuse me. He has three of his eight left. So he's going to go ahead of me. He's feeling pretty comfortable with that uh, Noble Sacrifice protecting him. He's going to silence my action here. What a dick. Oh, my God. Are you fucking kidding me? God damn it. Uh, this could get ugly if I don't draw a flame strike like really, really soon here. So my opponent's beating me and playing really slowly. This is hard. Ah, Sunwalker? Alright, that's a pretty good guard. We need to get rid of that Noble Sacrifice. We really, really do. And we're gonna do it with this guy because he actually survives. Let's go ahead and kill the biggest thing he has. It's not Noble Sacrifice. Okay. So it's a redemption. Ha. I haven't been hitting him for absolutely no reason. So he uses up another tick of the weapon. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and do this. Get rid of that. And now let's play the ooze to kill off his weapon. I guess I could have played the ooze first. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to kill the weapon anyway, I should have prevented this from coming back. I honestly, I honestly just didn't think about redemption. Or, uh, yeah, I didn't think about redemption. I just thought about the noble sacrifice. My consecration is fucking amazing right here. It pops the divine shield, kills both my other creatures, deals damage to me. I mean, I'm getting really, really low. And because my panda... Well, my panda would have died here, but my panda would have dealt enough damage for me to have won already with pyroblasts. So I might have to start using pyroblasts as removal. God damn it! Oh my god. True silver champion. Well, I really need... Yeah, I really just need flame strike or I lose. That's pretty much, pretty much how this is going to go. Uh, there's really no other way around this. I have these big spells. I drew, that's the danger, by the way, of two pyroblasts. I have these big spells um, that are really, really great if you if you can do the, well with the rest of your cards. But if you can't, then you're going to lose. My opponent is playing right into a flame strike by deal, damaging this guy, which is not the correct play. But luckily for him, he didn't. I didn't draw flame strike, so I'm just going to lose now. Um, is there any way I can hang on? I mean, technically, I could uh, polymorph this. Thing. And I could like silence this thing. I can kill this thing. And kill this thing. I guess technically I'm still in it, but the problem is I'm holding two cards. I'm holding two cards, but they're pyroblasts. I can't. I can't win with that. I have to like use them as like really over overkill removal on things to just stay in the game, and it's it's very expensive. It's going to be taking up my whole turn to do that. And my opponent, meanwhile, is just cranking out these 1-1s, one so I have to use the hero ability to keep working them down. It's just a problem. All right, my opponent is going for the kill here, which I cannot blame, because uh, I, I never did take any life gain. I'm down to one health. I never did take any life gain. I saw that one er Earthen Ring Forest here, but I passed on it. So all he needs is anything, really. And he'll be fine. Ah, this, this is the guy I could have taken and didn't. Okay, well, uh, that is pff, that is a problem. I need Flame Strike here. I have to get it or I lose. That is not Flame Strike. I could still draw Flame Strike and be okay, or else I lose. Nope! The Flame Strike is not there. Oh my god, that game was depressing. Uh, I would say that I would beat that player more often than I would lose to him. Um, and that he made some mistakes, like playing the 2 1 on turn 1 into my hero ability. But I had a very slow draw. I, I mulliganed my hand. Maybe I should have kept around the Demolisher. That was maybe perhaps a, a mistake I made. Is I made I mulliganed the Demolisher and kind of overestimated my deck's ability to provide a playable 2-drop or 3-drop. So I mulliganed my Demolisher. After that, I had nothing to play. I drew both Pyroblasts, and they were dead cards. And then, to top it all off, we had the Knife Juggler with two flings, and they both hit my Panda. And that prevented me from dealing enough damage to win the game with Pyroblast. So it was a really, really sad and frustrating game, but you have to, you know, take the morale hit and keep on playing, because if you get depressed and you, you know, lose because you're playing badly, then uh, you lost. Uh, your opponent didn't beat you, you sort of beat yourself. Red for kill the mage. All right, let's see if we can redeem ourselves a little bit here. Now, this hand, you really do have to mulligan. It's expensive removal and five drops and stuff. What the hell is going on? Where are my two drops? Jesus Christ. As, as I talk about keeping your, you know, spirits alive... Oh, man. Um, this is definitely awkward right here. Uh, oh, no, and my opponent has a fast start to top it all off. Oh, Frostwolf Grunt. Ah, uh, Frostwolf. Well, all things considered, that's not the scariest thing he could have coined out. Shadow Sun Cleric, that is almost certainly going to end up getting wasted. We'll just work that guy down. Spending two turns, by the way, in the early game to work down a two-toughness creature is not good. You're not spending any cards, but you're spending a lot of mana and time, and it is actually really bad to do that. 
Okay, well, I have some options here. I could ping off the Divine Shield. God damn it. Well, I could ping off the Divine Shield, and then they would both die to Blizzard in a couple of turns, or I could finish off this guy and then take less damage. Uh, I think what actually I'll do is this. Let's, let's kill that guy, take less damage, and then hopefully next turn I can play something that I can... And then the, the Argent's Choir will, will find worthy of popping its Divine Shield against. Wow. Well, my opponent... <laughs> That must have been, like, the pack from hell. Jesus. Uh, okay, Raging Organ. Um, my opponent can trade all his stuff in for it, but I'd rather waste him than waste the Shattered Sun Cleric, so we'll drop that in the way here. I'm not even sure it's worth blizzarding. I, I mean, I guess I have two of them. But this is a bit of a sad situation. All right, my opponent looks like is just going to ignore me. I can't really blame him for that, although a bit of an awkward decision. You know, that's a bit of a strange decision by my opponent. I don't know if I agree with that decision because, well, I mean, Shattered Sun Cleric is really great, but even if I didn't have Shattered Sun Cleric, I could run into this monkey, trigger Wind Fury, finish it off with Hero Ability, and then kill something else too and still live. So uh, I don't think my opponent should have let me do that. Let's go ahead and uh, pop the Divine Shield on that and kill that. Would I rather, would I rather kill that or would I rather deal 5 damage? The risk is if he has a Dark Iron Dwarf, he could buff this and kill my Worgen. But I'm actually going to do this. Let's actually put 5 damage on the on the face. I mean, I do have 2 Fireballs and a Pyroblast. I am sitting on, currently, 22 damage here. I don't actually need to deal that much before I can just start sending my spells at my opponent's face and win. She's not going to be able to get me down fast enough, unless she drops, like, a Ventrifo Mercenary or something crazy. Which, granted, she, she totally could have. It's not that crazy. It's a common card. Okay, there's a secret... Uh, it could be a counter spell or a spellbender, I suppose. That would be a bit sad. She's going th through some lengths here to uh, kill my worgen. Well, I don't actually want to attack because if the plan is to uh, kill with spells, I don't actually want to trigger the uh, spellbender. Or, excuse me, the, uh, the ice barrier, which that might be. So we'll just play a fireball, see if it's counter spell. Uh, it's not counter spell, nor is it spellbender. So, can I afford to attack? Let's say it is Ice Barrier, she'd go up to 26 health. As it is, she's going to lose. I'm actually going to pass the turn. I mean, it's not a counter spell. So next turn I can Fireball, get her down to 12, and then Pyroblast. Uh, we'll pretty much finish things off. Pyroblast plus two applications of the hero ability. Uh, my opponent just Fireballed herself. Wow, we're up against a little bit of a newer player here. Okay. <laughs> Oh god, I think I was probably going to have that game. I believe that fireball would have been headed toward my creature. That's the only thing that makes sense. So next turn I fireball hero ability, and then I pyroblast, and my opponent's at one health. And that's it. Okay, um, you know, I could have also played a creature to test for mirror entity. That would have allowed me to start attacking. But anyway, uh, that was fun. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this crazy start to the arena, do please like and or subscribe. I'll appreciate it. And if you want to see how it ends, well then stick around, because the rest of the games are coming soon. We'll see you in a bit.